Uh, we are building a new Texas Military Department base camp that allows the Texas National Guard to increase and to improve operations in this area. What you see now is the first stage of construction has already begun on what is 80 acres. In recent years, the issue of border security has become a topic of intense debate and controversy in the United States. With a surge in illegal border crossings and an increasing number of migrants seeking asylum, the situation along the Mexican border has reached a critical point. The Texas governor has mobilized the National Guard Army to the border and has also announced the construction of a new military base camp for them at the border. These new moves have rubbed the Biden administration the wrong way. Do you think these new moves will curb the surge of illegal immigrants at the U.S.-Mexico border. New military base camp. GOP lawmakers that I spoke with at the border last night saying that the Biden administration is inviting a humanitarian crisis to our doorstep. And the concern here in Brownsville, Texas, is certainly humanitarian. This is against this backdrop that the state of Texas has taken a bold and unprecedented step to address the crisis. Texas, with its vast expanse of border territory, has long been at the forefront of the battle against illegal immigration. As one of the primary entry points for migrants crossing the border, the state has faced significant challenges in maintaining the security and integrity of its borders. The surge in illegal crossings has put a strain on law enforcement agencies and has raised concerns about public safety and national security. At the center of this battle stands Governor Greg Abbott, a man determined to protect his state from the influx of unauthorized immigrants crossing into Texas from Mexico. His weapon of choice, Operation Lone Star. Operation Lone Star, Governor Abbott's border security mission, has been in effect for the past three years. It is a multifaceted operation aimed at deterring migration on the border and ensuring the safety of Texas residents. But it is more than just a mission. It is a symbol of Abbott's unwavering commitment to securing the border. From the very beginning, Governor Abbott has challenged the federal government's exclusive purview on immigration enforcement. He believes that the state has the right to take matters into its own hands and protect its borders, and he has spared no expense in doing so. Under Operation Lone Star, Abbott has overseen the expansion of the military on the border. He has deployed barriers, some of which have been deemed dangerous, in the water. These barriers serve as physical deterrence, making it harder for unauthorized immigrants to cross into Texas. But they have also sparked controversy, with critics arguing that they pose a threat to human life. Abbott has also deployed heavily armed tactical marine units on the water, further bolstering border security. These units patrol the river, ready to intercept any unauthorized crossings. Their presence is a clear message to those who would attempt to enter Texas illegally. The state is serious about protecting its borders. The expansion of Operation Lone Star has not been without controversy. Critics argue that Abbott's actions encroach on the federal government's authority over immigration enforcement. They argue that the Constitution grants the federal government exclusive purview in this area. But Abbott remains undeterred, steadfast in his belief that the state has the right to secure its own borders. And now, Governor Abbott has taken his border security mission to new heights with the announcement of plans for a permanent military base camp at the Texas-Mexico border. Governor Abbott announced the state is building a military base camp along the border as it scales up security operations. To expand our border security capabilities, uh, we are building a new Texas Military Department base camp. This 80-acre facility, part of a $10 billion state effort, will house up to 2,300 National Guard soldiers. Their mission, to secure the border and deter illegal border crossers. And I want to express my gratitude to General Seltzer and the Texas National Guard uh, for going above and beyond uh, to make sure that uh, they are showing uh, the way that Texas will defend itself uh, from the lawlessness uh, that's been created by Joe Biden's refusal to follow the laws of the United States Congress and secure our border. Recognizing the limitations of existing resources and the need for a more robust approach, Governor Abbott has unveiled plans to construct a forward operating base to house National Guard troops deployed near the Mexican border. The concept of a forward operating base is not new. It is a military term that refers to a strategically located base that serves as a hub for operations in a specific area. Typically, forward operating bases are established in hostile or remote regions to provide 
provide logistical support, intelligence gathering, and a base of operations for military personnel. In the case of Texas's forward operating base, its primary purpose is to house and support National Guard troops tasked with securing the border and preventing illegal crossings. The base will serve as a command center for coordinating operations and will provide the necessary infrastructure and resources for the troops to effectively carry out their mission. The decision to build a forward operating base is a significant departure from previous approaches to border security. Governor Abbott's decision to establish a permanent military base camp stems from his belief that a strong military presence will act as a deterrent, sending a clear message that Texas will not tolerate illegal immigration. By bolstering border security, the governor aims to protect the state's resources, maintain law and order, and safeguard the interests of its residents. Our goal is to make sure that we expand the effectiveness of that razor wire to uh, more areas along this border. Ha having the soldiers located right here, right by the river, uh, they're, they're going to have uh, the ability to more quickly be able to construct that razor wire barrier. While the National Guard has been deployed to the border in the past, the establishment of a permanent base represents a more long-term and proactive strategy. It demonstrates Texas's commitment to addressing the root causes of illegal immigration and ensuring the safety and security of its residents. The construction of the forward operating base is expected to be a massive undertaking. It will require significant financial resources and coordination between various government agencies. However, Governor Abbott has made it clear clear that the state is willing to spare no expense in securing its border and protecting its citizens. This announcement represents the latest escalation in the ongoing battle between the White House and Texas over immigration control. It is a bold move by Governor Abbott, a move that solidifies his commitment to border security and challenges the federal government's authority. As the construction of the military base camp begins in Eagle Pass, the symbolic center of Abbott's immigration fight, the community is left reeling. The announcement blindsided residents and even state representatives who were unaware of the project until recently. The town of Eagle Pass has already experienced significant changes due to Texas taking over Shelby Park by the Rio Grande, displacing the federal government. The construction of the military base camp has raised questions about the balance of power between the state and federal government. It is likely to lead to yet another legal showdown between Texas and the federal government, as the governor argues for the state's right to secure the border. As the construction of the forward operating base gets underway, there are many questions that remain unanswered. What will be the long-term impact on border security? And most importantly, will it effectively deter illegal border crossings and address the root causes of illegal immigration? Texas governor signs law allowing Texas to arrest migrants. Now, Governor Abbott's moves about the ongoing border crisis is starting to fan the flames of a growing conflict between the Texas government and the Biden administration. As I mentioned earlier, Texas has refused to allow border patrol agents into Shelby Park in Eagle Pass, a park located along the U.S.-Mexico border as part of the Operation Lone Star initiative. This decision has sparked outrage and intensified the already deepening rift between Texas and the federal government. Shelby Park, spanning a approximately 50 acres is a picturesque park located in Eagle Pass, Texas, along the U.S.-Mexico border. Its proximity to the Rio Grande makes it a crucial area for monitoring and addressing illegal border crossings. But why has this park become the center of a heated dispute? Governor Abbott, defending the decision, expressed frustration over the increasing number of migrants entering illegally through Eagle Pass and the subsequent actions of federal agents. He made it clear that Texas had reached its breaking point and would no longer tolerate these occurrences. As as a result, a fence was swiftly erected around Shelby Park, effectively denying access to Border Patrol agents. The Justice Department wasted no time in responding to Texas's actions. They requested intervention from the U.S. Supreme Court, seeking an order to compel Texas to allow Border Patrol agents back into Shelby Park. However, as of now, the court has not made a decision on the matter. The dispute over access to Shelby Park reached a boiling point when U.S. Representative Henry Cuella accused the Texas government of hindering Border Patrol agents from carrying out their duties. According to Quellar, three migrants, including two children, tragically drowned near Eagle Pass, and he claimed that the state's actions prevented Border Patrol agents from saving them. However, the Texas Military Department swiftly refuted these claims, stating that they were wholly inaccurate. They clarified that Border Patrol agents had informed them that Mexican authorities had already recovered two of the bodies before requesting entry to Shelby Park. The department further explained that Border Patrol agents specifically sought access to pursue 
pursue two other migrants who were believed to have been with the victims. In a legal filing to the Supreme Court, the Justice Department argued that, at the very least, Border Patrol agents could have assisted their Mexican counterparts if they had been granted access to the area. The conflicting accounts of the incident have only deepened the divide between Texas and the federal government. Texas officials have also argued that Border Patrol had significantly reduced its presence in the area more than two months prior to the incident. This raises questions about the level of cooperation and coordination between federal and state agencies in addressing the ongoing challenges at the border. In December 2023, Governor Abbott signed a bill that will take effect in March 2024. He approved Senate Bill 3, which is $154 billion in state funds aimed at continuing the construction of barriers along the 1-200 mile border. This funding will be added to the already existing $1.5 billion in contracts that the state has issued since September 2021, allowing for the construction of approximately 40 miles of steel bollard barriers in Star, Cameron, Valverde, and Webb counties. However, the battle for border barriers doesn't end with Senate Bill 3. Governor Abbott has also authorized the state to spend up to $40 million for state troopers to patrol Colony Ridge, a housing development near Houston that has been labeled a magnet for undocumented immigrants by far-right publications. This proactive approach to law enforcement aims to address the concerns of Texas residents who have felt the impact of illegal immigration in their communities. He also signed Senate Bill 4. And the battle over immigration at the U.S. border with Mexico continues, and one state is not waiting for Congress or the Biden administration to act. Texas has a new law that allows the state to arrest people suspected of crossing the border illegally. The passage of Senate Bill 4 is a bold move by Texas to assert its authority in immigration enforcement, a traditionally federal responsibility. Under this new law, crossing the Texas-Mexico border between ports of entry is now classified as a Class B misdemeanor, carrying a punishment of up to six months in jail. Under SB 4, crossing into Texas illegally from Mexico is treated as a misdemeanor crime. This offense is punishable by up to 180 days days in jail and a fine of up to $2,000. Repeat offenders could face even harsher penalties, with a second-degree felony carrying a punishment of 2 to 20 years in prison. This will send a strong message that Texas will not tolerate illegal border crossings. By making it a state crime, the law provides law enforcement with the authority to arrest individuals they suspect of crossing the border illegally, even if they are not at a designated port of entry. This represents a significant shift in the power dynamics between state and federal authorities in immigration enforcement. However, even before the ink had dried on the bill, SB4 faced strong criticism from various quarters. Democratic lawmakers, the Mexican government, and advocacy groups, including the American Civil Liberties Union, ACLU, voiced their concerns about the potential consequences of the law. They argued that SB4 would infringe on federal rights and due process for individuals subject to the immigration system. The ACLU, representing civil rights groups, wasted no time in taking legal action against SB4. They filed a lawsuit in the U.S. District Court for the Western District of Texas, challenging the law's constitutionality. The lawsuit alleges that Texas is overstepping its boundaries by exerting control over immigration, a domain traditionally handled by the federal government. It claims that SB 4 deprives individuals of their federal rights, including the right to contest removal and seek asylum. So our goal in filing quickly, by which I mean in the coming weeks, is to give this case enough time to be heard by the courts of the United States to assure that we can block this law before it is ever used to harass or target or arrest any person by the state of Texas. The legal challenge set the stage for a high-stakes legal battle with civil rights groups and the Texas government on opposing sides. The outcome of this lawsuit could have far-reaching implications for the implementation of SB 4 and the future of immigration policy in Texas. Federal courts, including the U.S. Supreme Court, have previously ruled that immigration laws can only be enforced by the federal government. However, some Texas Republicans hope that the new law will ultimately lead to a legal showdown before a more conservative U.S. Supreme Court, given the recent appointments of three justices by former President Donald Trump. The implications of Senate Bill 4 extend beyond the legal realm. The law allows a judge to drop charges if a migrant agrees to voluntarily return to Mexico. This provision raises questions about the potential coercion of individuals who may be desperate to seek asylum or escape dangerous situations in their home countries. It also raises concerns about the impact on vulnerable populations, including children and families. U.S. Reprisal Joaquin Castro, along with other Democratic members of Congress, has 
called on the U.S. Department of Justice to intervene and sue Texas to prevent the law from taking effect. They argue that the federal government should assert its authority over immigration and foreign policy and take appropriate legal action to stop what they see as an unconstitutional and dangerous piece of legislation. In response, Governor Abbott has defended the law, emphasizing the need for Texas to defend itself from drug cartels and criminal elements that exploit the poorest border. He has criticized the Biden administration's immigration policies, attributing the surge in illegal border crossings to what he perceives as deliberate inaction on the part of the federal government. The passage of Senate Bill 4 has ignited a fierce debate about the balance of power between the state and federal governments, the rights of migrants, and the effectiveness of criminalizing illegal border crossings. As the law goes into effect, its implementation and potential legal challenges will undoubtedly shape the future of immigration policy in Texas and beyond secure the border. Indiana, a state known for its heartland values and strong sense of community, has made a decision that has caught everyone by surprise. In a bold move, Indiana Governor Eric Holcomb has announced that the state will be sending its National Guard members to Texas. This decision comes in response to a request from Texas to restore order to the southern border, which has been plagued by a growing crisis. Recognizing the severity of the situation, Texas Governor Greg Abbott reached out to neighboring states for assistance. It was in response to this call for help that Governor Holcomb made the decision to deploy Indiana's National Guard members to Texas. The governor cited the need to restore order to the southern border and ensure the safety of both Texas residents and the migrants themselves. By sending the National Guard, Indiana aims to provide much-needed support to Texas law enforcement agencies. The National Guard members will work alongside their Texan counterparts, assisting with surveillance, logistical support, and the processing of migrants. Their presence will help alleviate the strain on resources and enable a more efficient response to the crisis. Governor Holcomb's decision to send the Indiana National Guard to Texas stems from his concerns about the federal government's negligence in enforcing immigration laws and securing the country's border. He firmly believes that this negligence not only jeopardizes national security, but also poses a significant threat to the economic security of every state. Indiana has been diligently working to combat the drug epidemic that has plagued communities across the state. However, the constant flow of illegal illegal drugs across an open U.S. border poses a grave risk to the progress made in tackling this crisis. Earlier this week, our governor joined 13 other governors in Texas for a briefing on the border situation. In a statement, he says the failure to secure our country's border jeopardizes national and economic security affecting every state. He adds he believes troops will help stem the flow of illegal drugs entering the U.S. This deployment is not the first time the Indiana National Guard has been called upon to serve on the southern border. Between in October 2020 and October 2023, 300 soldiers from Indiana have served in various federal missions on the border, showcasing their dedication and readiness to support the Texas National Guard in securing the southern border. Governor Holcomb's decision highlights the interconnectedness of states in addressing national issues. While the border crisis may be most acutely felt in Texas, it is a problem that affects the entire country. By lending a helping hand, Indiana is demonstrating its commitment to the well-being and security of all Americans i the growing tension at the border. In recent years, the southern border of the United States has been plagued by an alarming influx of illegal immigration, drug smuggling, and human trafficking. The situation has reached a breaking point, with overwhelmed border patrol agents struggling to maintain order. Thousands of individuals from various countries seeking a better life or fleeing from dangerous situations have been attempting to cross the border illegally. This has put immense pressure on the already strained resources and infrastructure of the border patrol agencies. The sheer volume of people attempting to enter the United States has made it increasingly difficult for authorities to effectively manage the situation. Alongside the issue of illegal immigration, drug cartels have taken advantage of the porous border to smuggle narcotics into the country. The Texas border has become a major entry point for drugs such as cocaine, heroin, and methamphetamine. The impact of this illicit drug trade has not only affected the border region, but has also spread throughout the United States, contributing to the ongoing opioid crisis and fueling violence in communities. Furthermore, human trafficking has become a grave concern at the Texas border. Criminal organizations exploit vulnerable individuals, including women and children, forcing them into modern-day slavery and subjecting them to unimaginable horrors. The need to combat this heinous crime and protect innocent victims has become a top priority for law enforcement agencies. The Texas government has been grappling with these challenges for years, but the magnitude of the crisis has overwhelmed their resources and manpower in their efforts to restore order and 
protect their citizens, Texas has reached out to other states for assistance. And that's where Governor Eric Holcomb and the Indiana National Guard come into the picture. Since taking office, President Biden has been confronted with a record influx of migrants, prompting criticism from all sides of the political spectrum. Economic problems and environmental disasters have plagued countries like Honduras, Guatemala, El Salvador, Nicaragua, and Cuba, exacerbating the already dire living conditions for their citizens. The COVID-19 pandemic further worsened these challenges, leaving many with no choice but to seek a better future elsewhere. As economies crumbled and natural disasters struck, hope dwindled and desperation grew. Families faced the harsh reality of limited opportunities, struggling to provide for their loved ones amidst the chaos. Gangs and violence added to the turmoil, making life unbearable for many. It is within this context that we see a significant increase in the number of individuals willing to take the risk and embark on the treacherous journey to the United States. They are driven by a desire for safety, stability, and a chance at a better life. In your first 100 days as president, what will you do to create a pathway to citizenship for many undocumented immigrants? That is a big issue for the AAPI community. And, and so I have a program that is significantly different and builds upon where we left off and tries to undo the damage that Trump has done. While President Biden's proposed plan to offer legal status to millions of undocumented individuals in the US failed to gain enough bipartisan support, conservatives argue that it has inadvertently encouraged migrants to make the journey. They believe that the perception of a more lenient approach towards immigration has acted as a pull factor, attracting individuals who see an opportunity for a fresh start. President Biden, however, has repeatedly called on migrants, including asylum seekers, not to attempt the journey to the U.S. If you're trying to leave Cuba, Nicaragua, or Haiti, you have, and we, or have agreed to begin a journey to America, do not, do not just show up at the border. Stay where you are and apply legally from there. Starting today, Despite his efforts to discourage illegal crossings, the numbers continue to rise. U.S. officials are now on pace to exceed 2 million migrant encounters in the fiscal year that began in October, marking the fastest pace in over 20 years. In May 2022 alone, statistics show that 239,000 some 116 arrests were made at the border, representing a 2% increase from April. But it's not just adults seeking a better life. There has also been a sharp increase in the number of children crossing the border. In our exploration of the challenges at the Mexico border, one policy stands out as a significant point of contention. Title 42. This pandemic policy, implemented during the Trump administration, allows for the quick expulsion of migrants over concerns about spreading COVID-19. Title 42, named after a provision in the U.S. Code, was aimed at preventing the spread of COVID-19 in holding facilities. Under this policy, almost all undocumented migrants seeking entry were automatically expelled, bypassing normal immigration laws and protections. Despite the criticism, the Biden administration initially kept Title 42 in place, citing public health concerns. However, after twice extending the policy, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention CDC, decided to end it on May 23rd, stating that it was no longer necessary given the current, more favorable public health outlook in the United States. The decision to end Title 42 had significant implications for the border situation. It triggered a desperate race to the U.S.-Mexico border with a approximately 10,000 people crossing each day, the highest levels on record. As the numbers continue to rise, makeshift migrant camps have sprung up along the border, further exacerbating the challenges faced by both migrants and authorities. As the clock approached midnight last night, we toured a popular border crossing here in Brownsville, Texas, across from Matamoros, and U.S. Border Patrol officials tell us there are approximately 22,000 migrants in that region of Tamaulipas, Nuevo Leon, own, just waiting to cross into the United States. By the time the policy was lifted, approximately 42% of all migrants encountered, totaling 100,699 people, had been expelled under this provision. To date, over 1.8 million people have been expelled under Title 42. The spike in migration under President Biden's presidency has put a strain on the immigration system and has raised questions about the effectiveness of current policies. As the numbers continue to rise, it is clear that this is a complex 
complex and multifaceted issue that requires careful consideration and comprehensive solutions. As the numbers continue to rise, overcrowded detention centers and logistical challenges have become a grim reality. Humanitarian organizations and local authorities are bracing themselves for the surge in demand for resources and support. The Biden administration has introduced new measures aimed at addressing the situation, but legal challenges loom large. The need for comprehensive immigration reform has never been more pressing. Hopefully, Texas's seemingly harsh migration decisions will help curb the influx of illegal immigrants at the US-Mexico border. And that brings us to the end of this video. If you love this kind of content, click on one of the cards on the screen.